begins to retreat. As the climate changes, we see uh, sort of what they left behind. And often it's these pockets. Uh, this period of time in the late Pleistocene, as the ice is retreating, uh, the meltwaters are filling up some of the pockets it left behind. And the water is flowing in a variety of ways. Uh, today, the water obviously flows out toward the east. Um, but in the Pleistocene, we see the water flowing from Lake Superior, there are outlets uh, into the Mississippi and down into the Gulf. And so there's uh, the water movement here is very different than what we see today. Um, as the ice is sitting on the Earth's crust, it's actually pushing down. And as the ice retreats, it bounces back a bit, similar to those memory foam sorts of things. You push a fist in and then it bounces back over time. And uh, that's definitely going to have an impact on the way that the water is flowing. I gave you this chart, I think, in your pockets. You go for so. section that at least when I was teaching the earth science that the students had and that word retreat it sounds like the ice is moving back north the ice does not move north it's just that it's melting away and so that front edge of it is retreating the ice continues to move towards the south from Hudson Bay towards Minnesota even though it's just that it's melting so fast that the front edge appears to be moving backwards. And students would think, oh, advance, moves forward, retreats, the ice turns around and starts moving the other direction. And uh, that's something that can be cleared up. That's a good misconception to clear up. But, uh, Great, thank you. Yeah. So this is not general courses. Human causes uh, effects like this, like uh, new uh, gas trading, oil wells, all this around the area, I from Dakota, all this affects what's happening in the Great Bay, geology. I have no idea. From a consultant standpoint, do you have any concept of that? Well, I sort of not understand that. Well, many, many that. countries actually uh, prohibit the use uh, the gas draining if it's not like, because it's going to affect geological oh, areas. Oh, I see what you're saying. Now, yeah, in, you're in, in the U.S., there, is, there are many things happening in North Dakota. Mm -hmm. Does it, would it like shift us a little bit more? I don't think so. You mean like fracking? Well, it does, but so far it's small. The center of the continent is so hard and so, I mean, that's like where you've got to this point, so I <laughs> take a lot to do it. So what are saying? I think yes. so. <laughs> Unless God Time will tell, tell, I guess. Time will tell. There are some other things that um, might be bigger concerns that we still 
sit on the rift, the new cotton rift. Um, who knows? I mean, we could be sitting on the ocean right now if, if the rift had continued to move apart and not stopped. Then it's possible. Those big processes are still. So, okay. other questions, things folks want to add? I used to teach in St. Paul, and um, Kathy Cork was a Board of Mission person that I worked with a lot, and I used to take students a lot to the brickyards, and we would find fossils and a rivers. Okay, but now I'm in Duluth, and I, if I understood you correctly, we don't have the same type of Board of Mission layers exposed here that they do in St. Paul on the Mississippi. So there's no place I could take kids to find fossils the same way that I did that. You can find, um, folks will tell you, you can find fossils in a region. Occasionally you get things washing up on the beach, um, but it's not the sort of thing that you could... No. So, so <laughs> short answer is no. <laughs> no, you're not going to, not like the brickyards. Right. No. They are, they're, you know, I lived on the beach and I found one horn coral over four years. Yeah. And I found stromatolites, the fossil algae mounds. Uh, might be but, the best uh, I was thinking about in working with even like the Hill Annex Mine or some of the, um, yeah. the folks on the range to be able to see some of the agency evidence there. That would be probably your best bet if you're looking at the, that sort of general period of time. And up there, you there are spots where you can go and find shark teeth yeah. from the seas and the iron range, but uh, not here. There's a lot of other neat geology that I have more to find here than right. going to the brickyards in St. Paul. Yeah, I'll try it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, as opposed to, you know, looking for what, that's a good thing to look for locally there, and up here, we'll talk more about that too when we move over, kind of your new home turf and the
and there have been earthquakes in Minnesota. We had one last year. Uh, they're just not common. Yeah. But over geological time, they are common. You know, it's just that in our human experience, we don't experience them here. They happen here. And it's fun to blame it on the companies and the industry <laughs> and all that. And they happen more in the east and around southern central U.S. I mean, Missouri had 7.8 back in the early 1800s. They're on a major fault. Huge one. Yeah. They're on a but there are good-sized faults out along the East Coast, too, compared to here. What was very neat is that two earthquakes happened the same day, one in Virginia and the East Coast, and one in southern Colorado on the same day last week. Yeah. And that's also a thing that was like, Naturally, it's, they say it's not possible, but because it's kind of the same technology. Uh, Maybe God's trying to get our attention. Yeah, there's a lot happening in the world right now. <laughs>